And then I would get some accelerator. Uh, you've got to be go 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 really small portions on both of these. The accelerator um, can actually damage the paint job if you're not careful. It's it's I mean it's like a solvent, so it'll it'll lift the paint. If you spray it on there and it gets everywhere, that's fine. But if you get it on there, it soaks in, and then you wipe it off, you might have some problems. But it evaporates really quick, so you should be fine. So what I would do is just. And they, they have the accelerant in, I put this in little squeeze bottles. This is the big big bottle that I, I put it in. So I have these little squeeze bottles with a real fine tip that I apply it with. But what you're gonna do is just right around the bottom edge of this, put a little bit of super glue, and then some of the zip kicker is another one. You can just like spray it in there or use those little applicators and squeeze it in. And that'll instantly set it so that you don't have to worry about it like running, running down and that kind of thing. Again, if the accelerant runs down, that's totally fine. Just make sure you're not rubbing on it and that you'll be good. But you really do want to put some super glue around all the edges and get these locked in place strongly. So we'll keep going here. And then we match them up. Three to three. And there's four and four. Sometimes you gotta wiggle in a little bit. We got number five. This skin was not designed for this. This was uh, the original design was different. Um, This one, the wire is a little bit bent, so I'm just going to get this place, and you can either cut that down or straighten the wire. But it should go in. It'll, it'll go all the way in once we're done. And then number seven. And again, these really need to be these these bigger guys, especially, really need to be uh, glued in. thing with those wires in there is you can bend and pose these especially once they're glued in they'll really they'll really lock in and number nine this one's got to be glued like I said these bigger ones need a little help staying staying on the wire is more just a guide Some of these some of these wires I'm gonna cut down here because they're a little long. There we go. So all that's in place. All of our wires are where they should be in the front. So now what we're gonna do is zip tie the skin down. And we want to go through the little hole in the front here. And we want to put it under this little cross crossbar here so that it's looping around that. Otherwise, if you put it up here, it's just going to slide around. This keeps it right in place. And we want it snug, but we don't want it we don't want it pulling too hard there. And there is another one that we want to do right here. And that locks that in. And then the same thing on the other side. Get our 
wire out of the way. And the other hole is right there. So you can just loop it in. And these will want to uh, just take some wire wire cutters and snip the snip the excess off. All of Hold on, the color just went really weird. It's like super warm. I don't know what's going on. You gonna pause it? I did. No, oh no. shit, I didn't. Fuck, sorry. Sorry about the technical difficulties. Everything went, went crazy there for a second. Um, one thing, for those of you that don't know the full plan with this piece, is that we're going... We wanted to keep this light and we want to keep this really, uh, as much airflow as we can get, basically. So what we're going to do is, the person's going to be in here, we're going to you know, cover a good bit of skin, but we still want airflow. We don't want everything covered because you just died of heat stroke. So what we're going to do is, everything that is exposed, all like you know, the behind the scenes type stuff, is going to be covered with cloth. So in my original spider uh, creation, I had these rings that went down the spikes, and then there was cloth that looped and kind of draped uh, to cover all of this ugly stuff, you know, all the piping and that kind of thing. So it would loop, it would loop down and show some skin, but not show any of the piping. And that's gonna that's gonna be what's gonna be done with this this piece um, once we're all all done with it. So it's, it looks, you know, it looks really neat and then really ugly in parts, but it's all all the ugly is gonna get covered. So. All right, we're on to the last few steps. So, had to take the batteries out for shipping. But we've already done a video with the lighting, so we're not going to do that. We're going to show it, show it empty. And I'm going to mount these just to show how I do it and the connections that are needed, uh, but it's, it's all going to have to be it's all going to have to uh, to come off to put put new batteries in. This big gray box is an Arduino, and I'd like to thank uh, Justin uh, Justin Time Props really really helped me out. He did all the he did all the lighting for this whole thing. I, I know sculpting and and fabrication and that kind of thing, but I don't know anything about light systems. So he really stepped up. Uh, I think this is one of the biggest biggest rigs that he's done. Um, not only are there two systems running down the back, but there's a whole undercarriage system as well. The lights in here on the back are controlled by this box, which is an Arduino, which uh, basically causes the, the lights to breathe. So they come, they come really like bright, and then they fade out, and then they come bright like the creature's breathing almost. So this is a key, a key thing. If we don't have this box, we can still use the lights, but they'll just be they'll be steady and they won't uh, they won't flicker or do anything anything fun. So these boxes, I'm, actually, I'm just going to show where I would mount them rather than uh, rather than, than doing this. Um, the first time I did it for the test, I used just I basically I put them in place and used electrical tape. So nothing uh, too complicated there. The Arduino needs to connect to this. This runs both light sets that run in the back. So yeah, there's only one way this can go. You run that to there, and I mounted this on the back side. I mounted that on the back side. Tucked, I tucked it back up in here, and then wound electrical tape. I'm going to include some of these big um, zip ties. You can zip tie in place. You can duct tape it, you know, whatever you need. So that, that's going to go there. 
and we'll just let it hang there. This is the power supply, so it's a ton of uh, AA batteries. And that goes right in there, and I just had this mounted, you know, just right, right onto the frame and just had, had it taped in there. So this is the power pack and the brain for the lights in the back. And we'll disconnect that to get it out of the way. Another power pack, exactly the same design. The lights on the bottom don't do that breathing thing. So they're just, they're, they're, they're underneath here. They're connected to that whole, this whole uh, set of pipes that form the tail of the creature. And again, we just pop this right in and that gives us our power for the, uh, the lights there. So those, those are there. And again, there's plenty of places in here to mount, to mount stuff. But we've, uh, we've already done a video showing the lights, so we're, we're good on that one. So get that out of the way. And then, the last step, or the last steps, are to have your person, they're going to stand in the rig. I'm too tall, I'm, I'm too tall for this. But you basically get into the rig, and then have somebody grab your chest piece. The, chest, the, uh, the belt loop will wrap around your waist. Um, and then this just clips right, this just clips right in here. And your shoulders will keep it, you know, when the actor's in there, the shoulders and neck will keep it in place and it'll just hang, it'll hang in front of the, you know, front of the monster like that. So we have that. And then you'll need someone to help you with the gloves. They are latex, so they're super strong and they're stretchy. So don't, don't worry about if you need to manhandle a little bit, just, just go ahead and, and you can really put some pressure on it. Um, you need your hands to be dry to get them in, so if you need a talcum powder or something like that, it's totally fine. And the mask. The mask does have its, have its lights. So we'll turn those on. I still gotta take the batteries out of these guys. So you can see there's a light, there's two light systems actually in there. One that runs the top eyes. And I've got these little bungee, these little elastic holders. You can maneuver the lights in place. The reason I had to do these little elastic holders is because you gotta change batteries. So, and when you're ready to go, you just tuck it back in. There is also going to be an EVA foam pad in the top so that you're not sitting on, you know, these lights are not touching. Uh, when La I, I tested it out and then when Laura wore it the other day, it was totally fine. None of the lights are banging into your, banging into your head or anything like that. But you can see it does give a good, it gives a really neat, really neat glowing effect for the, uh, for the eyes. So, and they're on just simple switches. We turn those off. These are AAA batteries in this. Everything else is AA. So that is, that's it. That's everything. One thing I do want to talk about real quick um, is if stuff starts to get beat up, you wear this thing out, you go to conventions, the paint, you know, is going is, to, eventually is going to rub a little bit. You're going to have some scuffs and that kind of stuff. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the paint. Um, FW Ink, acrylic inks are wonderful. Um, I did a lot with these. Comart is iron yellow, is a really nice uh, color as well, and I'll, put, I'll probably put links uh, down in the video for these. I used a bunch of Tim Gore Bloodline. I used some, I used about six or seven different companies' paints because I, I, I have my favorite, you know, reds and this kind of thing, um, or purpley reds out of a certain company. It's, um, so I use a ton of different stuff, but if you stick with FWs, they give a really good, they give these really good organic greens. Um, I love them. So, so I would recommend if you know if you need if something gets scuffed, you can do almost any kind of patching on this thing just with iron yellow from Comart and the uh, sap green from FW or sepia from FW. Um, those are easy, easy things to patch, and those can be applied with brush or airbrush. I talked a little bit already about the uh, the PVC cement. You don't want to use you don't want to use like super glue on this stuff. It'll hold and it'll feel good, but it's too brittle. This this actually almost like melts the PVC together. So it's really super strong bond. 
Uh, make sure that you've positioned it right because you won't get a second chance. Uh, the stuff, once it sets, you can't, you know, you'll, you'll break the pipe before you break the bond. It's really good stuff. Uh, the other thing I noticed on some of the legs, the, the bottom screw hole was a little bit, little bit out. So if you do get any kind of breakage or you get any kind of, of issue with that, this is, uh, there's a bunch of different brands. Odie makes some, um, it's just a, just a, like a 20 minute epoxy. Plumber's Putty, it's steel reinforced. If you do get some of the breaks, you can just apply this. It smooths with water and it actually accelerates the cure if you do that. So smooth it with water uh, and really, you know, you can rough the surface up to get it, get it to bite, but it's really super strong. I use this all the time to repair uh, just all kinds of stuff. So you, if you get any kind of break, or if something needs to be reinforced a little bit because you're kind of worried about it, just slap some of this on there. Um, yeah, and you should be good. The other thing, zip ties are your friend for attaching you know, different bits. Um, you can really lock it down. I'm gonna include a bunch for the skin because I'm gonna have to cut those off when I ship this. And uh, that's pretty much all of it. If you have any questions, um, you can reach me at uh, ravendartcreations.com or on Facebook or Instagram, uh, or email me ravendarkcreations at gmail.com uh, as well if you have any questions. Um, I love building these big suits. They're a lot of fun. They're really challenging. I really only want to do one or two of these a year because they, they're really labor intensive. Um, but they're, like I said, they're a blast. So I'll be doing a lot more of this kind of work. But the thing, the thing, even in pieces, and you know, not not uh, with someone in it, is really a neat. It's kind of a neat piece. So that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you.